Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to X2. Today is what March fourth, something like that. It is basically it's three a.m. today. Oh my god, it's March fifth actually. Hey guys, all right. So lots has been going on. Oh my god, uh, you will have already noticed a new intro. There was basically though X2 wasn't too interrupted by it. A big channel relaunch I've been working on for a while. And uh, that's now going to come over X2. X2 has seen so much change in the channel since when it very first began. I can't even begin to tell you guys. Where are we? Um, I know a place just like this. Uh, the far plane? It's the uh far plane. Uh oh. Oh, I wanted to say it. Oh my God! Stop, you stupid oh, children! Sorry. First in a year, you are. Hello? Question mark, question mark, question mark. We know who that is, but that doesn't sound like who we know. Ooh, it's not, it's not Titus, guys. First in a year. Who are you? This place was long sealed away until a man named Tremor came and unlocked its secrets. Tremor? Into the depths. Alone he descended. Never did he return to the light. Nice story. Yeah, it is a pretty cool story. About this tremor, he... Huh? Parfait? Let's, let's get out of here! Okay! Mmm, and now the man's gone. Ooh. Yeah, we're starting big today, guys. This is the Via Infinito. And Tremor is a name you should remember Macon talked about a while ago. Tremor was the founder of New Yevon, who ran around gathering spheres, kind of like the one in front of our feet right now. I, I, don't, I don't actually think there's random encounters here, so we can run over. And then, miraculously, after a very short period of time, just ran off with all of them. And then New Yevon had a new man in charge whose son proposed to Yuna. And then there was a bloodless coup d'etat, which uh, saw that leader, who tried to do things a little bit too much like old Yevon, be replaced with Barilai. And so, some old, unsent, weird dude just started talking about Tremor to us beneath Bevel. This is where Tremor went. And we... I've got a bit of an adventure on our hands. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, anyway, so there's a sphere here, a very important one. Crimson Sphere 6. This is why we're here. Let's watch the sphere now. I mean, this is one big mystery, the stuff with Tremor. Why is a Crimson Sphere here? Well, here's another big mystery. What did you see? As soon, as soon as we went in. It became violent. Everyone. It must have been the pyreflies. They swarmed around us, too. So many pyreflies. We saw it. That, that apparition. Start making sense. It was a machina. An enormous machina. It trembled and growled. Like a beast. What? I've never seen anything like it. When I saw the apparition, it got inside me. It made me feel fear, regret, despair. Same here. I can't explain why, but I felt so sad. Yeah. It was like somebody's raw emotions just came out of nowhere and hijacked my... A bit like Len with the dress sphere, guys. Somebody? Somebody who? Uh, is that all? Return to the command center at once. Protect the maester until the operation has concluded. That is your first mission as Crimson Squad members. So they made it. What, we passed? Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> we did it. Yeah, we did. 
Run! Run! <gasps> Quiet! <gasps> no! They tried to kill him! They tried to kill them! Big conspiracy level theory stuff. Don't forget, that is all at the same time as Operation Meehen. Please go back and look at those old videos I did where I was like, there's something else going on below our feet right now, guys. And you won't know for so long. So remember the first sphere we saw related to the Crimson the, the Crimson Squad and the Crimson that chamber? The first sphere we saw were people looking for bodies and there were three missing. The, the three missing were our three friends. So as you can see, there's a hole there. Again, Bevel gives you this great feeling of being at the top, very, very high up, obviously. But on the top of many buried secrets. Of course, in the previous game, we had the Via Purifico. Got it right this time. And uh, in this game, we find that not only is that immense dungeon there, but so is the Infinito. Within this labyrinth, fiends will appear despite any special abilities or equipment you may be using. What does that mean? That means the Charm Bangle doesn't work. It also, I guess, might mean that the Lure Bracer doesn't really have too much of an effect. But um, that's pretty important. Now, at the back of every floor, you always have the option to return to the surface. I'm going to say not yet. Um, and when you go up there, actually, I think even maybe hitting that pad might heal you up just immediately on its own. But what they're doing us doing here is forcing us to go through a long-ass dungeon that slowly gets more and more and more difficult as we proceed. Now, these early floors are not going to be very hard. The, the funny thing is at the moment, guys, I'm playing so much of this game between episodes, but instead of doing it as play tests, I'm spending that time. So we get Tonbury here. Hello, Mr. Tonbury. Uh, instead of doing that as like play testing future stuff, it's just grinding. It's just all I can do is just grind, grind, grind. The previous two episodes, we didn't have too many fights uh, because we were like in the mass cave and so on, but we did actually level up a lot. We got to level 60 last episode. This episode, I've bumped all the girls to level 70, and I've also trained some of their more unique dress fears. So, a mechanic of this place are Tonberries. Tonberries are really cool. Um, they're obviously very dangerous. We've already in the series seen some of what they can do. We saw in the previous game some of what they can do from um, uh, the creature creator and some of the arenas we were doing, which, by the way, we'll be concluding very soon. But uh, in here, sometimes they'll actually help you out too. And these current ones on the higher floors really aren't too bad. This place has always been... Well, whenever I think of X2... There are a selection, and as we play through the game, I've talked to you guys about that selection of things that, that I, I think of with X2. And the Via Infinito is absolutely one of them, because it's one of those things you, you spend just so long playing, you spend so long interacting with. And uh, there are... Actually, I'm not going to tell you guys how deep this is. Hopefully I didn't in a previous episode. I might have already in a previous episode. I'm not going to tell you how deep this goes, but it goes very... Very deep, all right? And special things will happen the deeper we get. Our goal today is at the very least... See, so does that heal us? Let's have a look. Yes, it does heal us. I thought it did. Okay, cool. Our goal today is to get to the first special thing that happens, at the very least. Because then we finally get access to a different side story. All the uh, the stuff that happens in the cave and so on, by the way, that we just saw in that cutscene. We've seen a lot of side quests at the moment, right? You can think of the Angramenu conflict that's currently happening in Beacon Hill Desert as pretty much side quest territory. But honestly, that cave, the Crimson Squad stuff, that's all super important to pretty much every plot in the game. The stuff to do with Len, the stuff to do with Shu Yin. I mean, it's pretty obvious that it was Shu Yin that was in that cave to us now, right? Um, but even Yuna's pursuit of her beloved and so on. Just as Yuna thought, all the threads are combined. And that really is at the forefront of a lot of this story. Anyway, let's have a look at some cool abilities. So we've got Riku and Lady Luck. You'll notice down on the health in the bottom right hand corner that Riku has the least health of all of them. You'll also notice actually Pain killed an enemy there, even though I didn't tell her to. She's not Berserk. She's not got Bloodlust on. Why did she do that? Because actually as Berserker, which she's now maxed a ton of stuff out, she has a lot of counter strikes. So there she just got physically attacked and she will automatically counter. This was gear we saw back in Final Fantasy X. And um, basically the Berserker gets the lot of it. The idea of the Berserker is just to have all this passive stuff that makes them do insane amounts of damage. And well, that's what you're seeing there. Here we get another Tonberry. You really can avoid the Tonberries. When I was younger, I used to get obsessed with JRPGs that kind of had this cool... And you'll notice that Pain's done a lot of damage too. I'll talk about that in a second. I used to get, find all these JRPGs and they used to be like, Oh, we don't have random counters. We have all the enemies in the overworld. Woo! And uh, I always liked how X2 kind of gave you a bit of that feeling, mixed a little bit of that in. Hold on, what's over here? Is this to the surface or not? 
Yeah, it is back to the surface. Okay. All right. Well, that's fine. So very forgiving right now. Lots of heal points. Lots of uh, options for us to climb back up. But um, but yeah, the Tombreeze are kind of your exp that experience in uh, in uh, ten two. Anyway, Pain's gonna kill these guys a little bit more. Um, and yeah, the idea of the Berserker is she just gets a ton of stuff that lets her keep passively throwing out damage, throwing out damage, throwing out damage, throwing out damage. So I'll show you guys what she's got. Now she's not actually that close to mastering it. You'll notice she's only 65% done. And that might seem really low to you, but if you have a look at the list, she has basically all the abilities we care about, but evade and counter is 400. Uh, and auto regen is actually 0 out of 80, which I, I suppose I could get first, which we might as well. But uh, evading counter is um, actually different to counter attack and magic counter. The counter attack, she gets hit, she'll hit back. Magic attack, she gets hit with magic, she'll hit back. Evade and counter, and this worked this way in 10 as well. This was one of the little mistakes I made as we were playing 10. One of the swords we could have bought from Awaka shortly after Operation Mihen. Uh, I believe it was that early anyway. Because he had some pretty insane OP early gear. Uh, had this component to it. What it actually does is it allows her to evade. It gives her like a bonus chance to evade that exists even outside of her agility stat and otherwise evasion chances. And then when that procs, she will counter. So, evading counter is really powerful, and that's why it's got 400 points in there. Anyway, we just talked a lot about pain there. I did want to talk a bit about Bariku and what's going on with her. She, of course, has been playing on Lady Luck, um, and she's leveled that quite a lot. Basically, the way I leveled these girls was uh, Monster Arena with the AP egg equipped that we got from the Chocobo dungeon. And then they spammed up a lot of their skills very, very quickly. Hopefully, we'll get another encounter. And a lot of her abilities are luck-based. I never, when I was younger, liked the reels too much. The reels are cool. And definitely there's a lot of prominent and funny effects you can get out of them. But my favorite were the dice. So let's have a look at uh, Riku here. Gamble. She's got two dice or four dice. Uh, four dice is basically... Wow, she just unlocked magic reels as well. That's ridiculous. Hopefully uh, Pain doesn't kill anything. Yeah, she won't. Okay, good. Um, four dice is basically just a straight upgrade. It just can't, takes longer to cast. But if you get the tomes and all that stuff, eventually it will come down in the cast time again. And she throws four dice onto the field. And then, depending on what they roll, it will chain a bunch of hits up and hit your enemy. And actually, funnily enough, we got nine hits there. The first time I used that off screen, I got like 25 hits or something crazy. I got like loads of sixes. So yeah, you just basically spam the dice on Lady Luck at the moment. But she did just unlock magic reels as well, which I was anticipating in this episode, so I can show you guys that too. So what floor are we on right now, I suppose? All right, close to five. So this dungeon's a great place for us to just move forward and see some of the new abilities that the girls have. I did kind of have a crazy idea. X2 has been a show that, you know, I if I could have dedicated 100% of my time to, we could have done some totally crazy things. I kind of wanted to do every single battle showing off a new skill of every single dress sphere or garment grid special effect in the game. Um, and each battle would be somehow unique. Which would have been cool. But somehow I think that's a little bit unrealistic. And that would be a lot of stuff setting up. It basically, after every single battle, I'd have to cut so you guys don't see what I'm doing while I swap stuff around and set new things up. So whatever. Uh, let's just wake her up with a remedy. Oh yeah, she's already awake. I forgot. Uh, sleep is one of those status effects that actually does turn off between battles. So do remember that. Get another Tombri. This one, of course, we do want to fight. Oh wait, hold on. This was just a, a random battle. And as you'll notice, there's a, a really weird assortment of enemies. Back in uh, Final Fantasy X, we actually saw that there were mostly water-themed enemies in the Via Purifico. But then water was a bit of a theme of the environments around there, and it's actually not here. A lot of the environments remain fairly consistent. So there we get 16 hits, and you could just see the ridiculous damage it would do. Believe it or not, Lady Luck, in general, as a dress sphere, isn't one of the heavy hitters, isn't one of the heavy supporters, isn't much of anything combat wise now if you had perfect rng i'm sure it really can be quite extreme every battle when you'd be fine let's try and kill him before the chef's knife go 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 no Riku, i should have attacked no, well, whatever um but actually what it's good for is leveling uh now we got the ap egg which gives you triple ap okay uh that's pretty insane it gives double experience to fiends by the way so i use that to level my fiends the, my main fiend team are also level 70 at the moment but uh what you'll actually notice about riku hopefully that they've unlocked so far um lady luck you know she's still pretty early in her progression down here you get double xp and i believe you get dub uh double ap as well so this is actually more of a grindy uh thing it's like if you want to get their levels up quite high then you can go for this i'm pretty sure if we train this first we could get like double AP or something uh, in the future. And double AP stacks with triple AP. So using Lady Luck and an AP egg, you can get a crazy amount of ability points at the end of battles, which is pretty nice. All right, so we'll move on over here. 
I guess the thing about those platforms is there might be a little bit of risk that you'll get another random encounter when you try to go for it. But so far, it's pretty easy. We got plenty of stuff. Once again, if you're trying to max out the creature creator, uh, you want to capture all the fiends in Luke in, in Bevel, sorry, before you unlock this dungeon. Because the second you enter this dungeon, you essentially change the fiends that you will then ca uh, cr catch in the creature creator. So that wasn't something I actually did. Don't forget what I told you a long time ago, that if you miss fiends in that way, like you unlock the fiend colony in the Mihen High Road before you catch stuff like chocobos and so on in the Mihen High Road, what you're going to find is all of those fiends then just move to Luca, And you can still get them with a couple of rare exceptions, but they're very, very, very rare, and it's, it's, it's a pain in the ass. Which is exactly what I had to do, by the way, to catch a chocobo between these videos again, since we already did the fiend colony, and now I can't catch chocobos anywhere except Luca. Yeah, I guess we can start cutting battles now. What, what floor are we on? We're on floor six now. That's not too bad. Next, I guess I can talk a little bit about Yuna, who has been training her samurai now. Uh, and... Oh, uh, one other thing about Riku, by the way. That, that fire elemental on the screen actually reminds me a little. That? Riku actually has Force of Nature equipped. Why Riku? I don't... Well, if you look at the cards in her hand right now, they don't normally glow like that. And you'll see she just got healed by that, that elemental. And, and then pain countered. Man, this is cool. Look at all the Orvag stuff we've got going. So Riku, when she attacks there, she's going to do 2,692 damage to that yellow elemental. Don't forget the way the, uh, is it called Tetris Strike in this game? Works, okay? If the yellow elemental detects that it's been hit by a certain element of damage it is weak to, it will choose that one over all the others. So Riku actually hit it with four elements at once, but the damage formula it used was just for water because water was the one that was super effective against it. Pokemon Star, okay? So that's uh, that's basically the way that that works, and I like Riku on it because Riku on Force of Nature is what I used to use when I was a lot younger and I first started playing here. So if we watch Riku here, and I actually make her attack herself before the Tombri dies, she just healed herself for 1,944 uh, damage. She just healed herself for that amount. How fantastic is that? So Riku's just like super tanky. I, I kind of had a decision to make. Did I want Yuna to be on Force of Nature so she would just be ridiculously sustainy? She could just attack herself, always be super healthy with all the extra health I gave her. Or did I want to give it to Riku? Now the reason it's on Riku is because on this episode I wanted to show off Lady Luck. And Lady Luck is more power damage based. So Riku's not actually using any of her magic gear at the moment. And so then to get that magical element back, why not use Force of Nature? Plus the nostalgia from when I was younger. You get it? All right, cool. There, funnily enough, the flame dragon ambushed us. So we had to charge an entire turn before we got to do anything. He was so slow, though, compared to our agility, he couldn't even do anything. <laughs> I'm happy with how easy this is right now. You might think, oh, this is a walk in the park. It is because I've been grinding a lot in preparation for a lot of this stuff. It's because I'm very scared of this dungeon. This is a place, once again, that childhood wooden potatoes never managed to finish. So, yeah, this is going to be pretty interesting. And let's talk about why Pain has got so much damage. Um, Pain has got so much damage because she's now level 70. And don't forget the way that the, the, this game works. In theory, I could have pushed her to 255 strength even when she was level 10. That's the max strength stat. But she wouldn't have been doing 9,999 damage. That's not the way it works in this game. It would then, like, multiply the strength stat by her actual level. And then you'd get the total damage considers both. But now that she's level 70 and she has a ton of like really good, uh, she's on a she's on a very offensive dress sphere. She's also on I, I love how little damage the Tombreeze are doing. She's also on two very potent strength boosting uh, item stats. She now has almost 255 strength and she's level 70. So uh, for example, let's go pain. She's got the Hyper Wrist, which is strength plus 30. She's got the Kaiser Knuckles, which is strength plus 50. Nothing else. Berserker, and you see her strength is 219. That's why she's now hitting a lot more damage. And yes, those 9,999 hits, in theory, I could swap and put on break damage limit for her on Enterprise. And and she could, in theory, then do over 9,999. But to equip it, I would I would lose strength stat for that slot. So we have to wait for her to get closer to 99 before that's something we do a lot of. But as you can see right now, it's totally okay. These are some of the weaker fiends of the game. The girls haven't even leveled once, and I guess I overprepared. But that's fine. That means I can just sit down and record a ton of episodes with you all, and that's that's what we really want, right? Well, here we go. Close to 10. Who was expecting something to happen on close to 10? Well, maybe something will. Here we go. We've got another Tombri. I think, by the way, we can jump diagonally to avoid some of these. Maybe I shouldn't kill every single one in the damn game, but I do want to fight an oversold one. Oh, this is a new monster, I guess. I wonder if that's because we're 10 floors lower now. In any case, he got absolutely owned. <laughs> yeah. 
And, uh, and yeah, as you guys can see, the 10th floor, nothing really happens. I remember my original disappointment of this. I did get quite, when I was a lot younger, I did get quite deep down. Don't, don't misunderstand me. Uh, I won't tell you the floor I got to, but I never got, like, crazy, crazy, crazy far. Alright, so you see a bit of a difference here. We got a left, we got a right, and we got a Tombri in front. Let's go the Tombri in front. Because, as you guys remember from, uh, in chapter 2 and 3 when we came under here, those little platforms tend to activate things. Now, earlier in the episode, here we go, we'll, we'll trigger this. I forgot we were on this for a second here. <clears throat> oh dear, it's teleported us. I actually don't remember the layout of all of these floors perfectly. Let's go back through here. Now, on the earlier you guys mentioned, uh, heard me mention something about garment grid effects. There are some garment grids out there. Let's go this way instead then, I guess. That will actually give you new abilities in battle. Like, the one that I've talked about all the time is the end. You know, this crazy nuke ability. There are a couple of others, uh, which we will be getting soon enough. But, um, as for the end specifically, to get that you needed every single oversolable fiend. The Vi Infinito is actually pretty good to that end. I, I, can we jump down there? Is that the way to the next floor? It's actually pretty good. Basically, all the monsters we're seeing in this dungeon are monsters we've seen elsewhere in the game. So, like, if you see or defeat an enemy somewhere else in 10-2, with just a couple of exceptions, it's basically going to appear here in the Infinito. So weak, stupid fiends appear early on in the early floors, and then more powerful ones appear later on. So if you want to see an oversold version when you go to Shinra's bestiary, remember, not the creature creator, just his bestiary. If you go there and you see, oh, I haven't seen this thing oversold yet. In the regular version of the game, let's try the diagonal. Oh, did that work? Is this a Tombri? Yes, it worked. Cool. If you go to the bestiary and you see you don't have something oversold, this is your best bet. You can go to a very specific floor, grind for a bit, Kill enough of them until, there you go, you see the oversold version. That could be what I end up doing. It depends how, t how, how time is for me. Um, uh, between, like, the, the last few episodes for us to actually be able to get that garment grid. But uh, you remember, actually, as well, in a very recent episode where we killed the Jumbo Cactuar. I said, when we kill this thing, it will actually appear elsewhere. Welcome to elsewhere, I guess. Another thing I do kind of want to talk about, and I believe it's an, a, a unique asset... At least I got this information like ages ago, uh, like last year when we were, when we were playing this. Um, and I'm really not sure because I think we've seen it quite a lot. This one's patrolling. There's actually banners in these hallways. You can see them there actually up there in, in the battle already. Those banners, those are supposed to look like you, Yevon. Uh, no, not the not the symbol of Yevon, not not any of that stuff, but the a actual you, Yevon. You know the little bug guy, the summoner of Sin and Zanakin, Dream Zanakin. Yeah, that that's what they're supposed to look like. Damn it, Tonbreeze. I There is a reason I'm running into all of these guys beyond just experience, trust me. Uh, but yeah, so that's supposed to be you, Yevon. And uh, don't forget that that's because, obviously, look at where we are, right? We're beneath Bavel. This is where Yevon's deepest secrets always were. There's the question of, though, why did Tremor run down here after he found all of those spheres? It looks like one of the spheres he had, at least, was one of the ones documenting what happened at the Meehan operation. The other perk, as well, as we continue to climb down, the other perk of having such a huge variety of enemies here are blue bullets. Now, blue bullets, I resolved to not get all of them. We missed Annihilator from the, uh, from the, my, from Jose. But Annihilator is basically an international, especially, okay, where you can, you can fight so many other fiends in the fiend arena. Uh, Annihilator is the only one you can miss. A lot of the other ones you can still get here. So if you didn't get them in the earlier chapters, this is also a great place to get, uh, plenty of blue bullets. So that's what's really cool about Riku at the moment as well. She's actually doing comparable damage to Pain, even though she's not on a heavily offensive Dress sphere, and she's not on heavily offensive gear otherwise, just because she's getting the stat bonus every time, which is really, really cool. But yeah, you guys might be looking at this and thinking, man, this is, this is, you know, a, a cakewalk. We should have come here earlier. But the problem is, I don't want to zigzag. We've already done so much zigzagging around. I'm actually going to ignore this, Tom Brief, once. We've already done so much zigzagging around through various stories. I didn't want to keep coming in and out every time we got, like, another 10 levels of this, right? Close to 16. We get another one of these fun ones. I'm just going to take a right straight away. We're not going to go for the Tombri instead. See here, you should recognize some enemies we fought on the Jose High Road in a previous chapter. Which now, by the way, you guys should have a bit more perspective. How little there is to do on the Jose High Road. Doesn't it seem like I've barely ever been there in the whole series? I mean, we were there like once in Chapter 2 to get a, a Syndicate uniform, but that's basically it. Cloister 17, still no change. Oh, we got Chocobo Eater, that's awesome. And he got one shot. Those are like the most fun enemies to one shot, seriously? Oh, uh, uh, we got a little example of flying Una there. Actually, as well, for these next couple of cloisters, uh, I did want to talk to you guys about what Una can do. How did I get so distracted? I think I ended up talking about Force of Nature on Riku, because we loaded into a battle. So, 
Yuna is on Samurai indeed. We've got two enemies, so hopefully Pain doesn't annihilate them too quickly here. All right, and we've got Ambush. So, Yuna, she's got spare change where she can throw gill at people, and she's got a lot more Bushido stuff now. Hayate, you might have seen already, Logos has been using as one of my fiends. You've got, uh, which is, uh, buff your evasion, give yourself haste, which is quite nice. I guess we can see the animation here. It's really not too amazing, I'll, I'll say that much. As long as they all keep attacking Riku, I'm fine. Oh no, Wolf, you just got yourself killed. Don't, don't temper the beast. Oh god, okay. And then, uh, so we've also got No Fear, which is chill and protect for you. You can see it's kind of like, Samurai is a weird mix of Warrior and Dark Knight, I would say. With some, some of the more miscellaneous effects. I do think that Samurai is the least distinct. When I think about all the systems that are in this game, all the gear that's in the game, all the items that are in the game, all the abilities, I really think they are so translatable to another game. Like, if I made a video game, I would steal so many ideas from X2. But the one, and I think all the classes are so distinct and well done, but the samurai is a little bit unclear sometimes. Anyway, strength and accuracy here. You've got deal increasing damage as you defeat more en enemies here, which I guess we can try out on momentum. Momentum was one of the last ones I got. And I believe the last thing Yuna's learning right now is once again one of those instant kill things, which just isn't that great. They don't, honestly, samurai doesn't have too many flashy animations. Just kind of one of those, uh, I, I I don't want to say it, but I feel like a little bit of a filler class. You notice our encounter rate is way higher on this floor. And uh, if you've been wondering about Yuna's insane health, like almost 8,000 health compared to Riku's 1,352, it's because Samurai naturally gets a lot of health, and I have two crystal bangles on her, which increase health by 100% each. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so yeah, she's doubled her health and then doubled it again. Cloister 18. Man, this cloister was really small. Look at that. Oh, I'm happy with that. I didn't realize this one would be so short. So straight into Cloister 19. A single battle there, and all I got was a Tombri, which I chose to fight. Cloister 19, let's take a right. As we get deeper, there will be more and more and more different variations and uh, interesting stuff going on, by the way, guys, uh, in terms of the, like, the level designs. That was our way out, and then finally, prepare yourselves. Oh, we got a we got a battle right at the ends. Oh, check it out. We got some even some yows and yaks. These guys uh, were pretty fun fiends to level for me. All right, there we go. They go down. Prepare yourselves, guys. There is a lot, a lot of really cool lore in this dungeon, and we're about to get some of the first of it right now. The first major thing to happen will be on floor twenty. Ah, look, it looks like the first one. Um, I'm really not too worried about this boss. But I am going to go save. Because <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Particularly, I don't know how Force of Nature is going to do on this battle. And yes, who was that you guys just saw over in the, there in the distance? Should be a character you recognize. Funny enough, I saw someone about 10 episodes ago or so. Um, said uh, this character appeared in one of the spheres, one of the treasure spheres. And they're like, wait, I don't remember who this is. The person waiting for us on Cloister 20 is none other than Wainan Keenock. Old friend of Auron's. Murdered by Seymour Guado in the previous game. Actually became an unsent and was sealed away under Bevel. And what happens to unsent, guys? Maester Keenock. We just saw about you with the Crimson Sphere stuff. Wait, hold on. Do you have a Crimson Sphere? No voice acting. Oh, God. And he becomes Aranaya. All right, which I'm pretty sure our girl should be fine with. This guy's got about 18,000 health. Um, now, okay, there's a lot of trivia that I've got for this fight, though, so hopefully he doesn't blow himself up too quickly. We're not at super boss level yet, and this guy should be perfectly fine. First thing I want to say about this fight is I think it's really cool that they made Keenock, an old uh, NPC, become one of the few new fiend variants that they created for X2. Aranaya, by the way, is actually like a, a real world term. It's, uh, I believe it's a genus of spiders. I think I'm getting that right. Um, and also, it appears in a lot of Dungeons and Dragons stuff. So, so, let's attack him and see how much damage we do here. 1,800? Okay. Should we just Berserk Pain and go for it? I think we are. I think we're going to Berserk and we're going to use four dice. And then we're going to use another special ability here, Sparkler, on, on, on that. And let's see how things go. This is the girls in their element here. 
Let's see how long you survive, Keenock. The first couple of bosses that we find in the Via Infinito shouldn't be too part. That was that was so sucky. Let's go Hayate here. There's the dice. Riku, are you gonna blow him up? Ten hits. That's not too 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 good at all, really. Oh, there you go, and he died. Great. But yeah, you find Keenox down here. And actually, what we're going to find, guys, is a lot of very cool, important characters from the previous game have had their eventual fate sealed down here. And I would love to hear what you all think those characters are. Who are they? I mean, a lot of them are kind of predictable. But some of them maybe, maybe not so much. So anyway, we get a Mithril Bangle. That's the thing that increases your health by 100%, by the way. The Wandering Unsent. You think there are more in here? Probably. Uh, I think we should go home now. Let's ease their pain. You're going? Mm hmm. Oh man, Yuna, you are. Uh, I knew it. Yuna's fucking cool there. Yuna is so cool. That is like one of the best moments for Yuna. Don't forget she's a summoner, or she was trained as a summoner, and summoners were uh, well-versed in the ways of sending. Sending something that we haven't even seen too much of. Of course she has the motivation to send them. Of course she wants to ease their pain. She's so determined. She's cool. This is like the end game, you know, like dungeon stuff from the original release, all right? And th th having Yuna's character in such an awesome place there is, is really cool. Anyway, so yeah, what kind of sphere would Wayne and Keenock drop? Crimson Sphere 8. And actually, guys, I'm not going to be showing off every single floor of the Vire Infinito. We will return here. But I actually agree with Riku for now. Now we have every single one of the Crimson Spheres. Let's watch the final one. And how about we put them in the door at Mushroom Rock? Watch the sphere. Oh, I can't wait. 